Back in the day, if you wanted to hack anything on your Android phone to change how it functioned or change how it looked, you needed to be rooted. Fortunately, this is no longer the case, and I'm gonna show you 10 great apps you can use to hack your Android phone. One of the first things I used to do when I rooted my phone was change how my status bar looked. Fortunately, you can now do this without rooting with just an app called Status. Not only will this give an older Android phone the ability to change your status bar based on which app you're currently running, you can also change your default status bar color to be anything that you want, and you can change your icon color as well. And there's a setting called Contrast Icon Colors, which will make sure your icons never turn invisible depending on which colors you've chosen. You can then change where everything appears in your status bar. So if you want your notifications to be, say, in the middle or on the right, not on the left, you can do that. This allows you to customize any element that appears in your status bar. With your battery, you can show and hide your icon. You can have it display text as a percent if you want to. And there's a bunch of different icons that you can choose. This goes for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and everything else. And using status, you really can customize your status bar to look exactly how you want it. One of my favorite root apps of all time was GMD Immersive Mode, and you can now use this on any phone without being rooted. This will let you force your apps to display in full screen. You can customize it on the go using the notification button. This is great for apps like YouTube if you want to make the experience feel a little bit more immersive. And if you get the paid version, you can make it so apps will automatically open however you want. Parallel Spaces is one of the most powerful apps that I've found this year, and this will let you run multiple versions of the same app. So if you have more than one Facebook account, you can use Parallel Spaces to clone the Facebook app, and then you can log into these separately and run them independently. This will also work for games. So if you've got more than one account for something like Clash Royale or Plants vs Zombies, you can log in and then play both at the same time. And then the final thing you can do is theme these cloned apps. The it currently only supports a handful of messaging apps, but it's a nice way to add a little bit of extra flair to your phone. If you run lots of minimal setups on your phone, or if you just want to make your phone look different, then Powerline is a really powerful app. This lets you have a bar at the top of your screen which will display how much battery life you currently have. The bar itself is incredibly customizable. You can change the transparency and you can change the height. You can also change the different colors. So if you're on full battery, you can have it on green, and then you can have it changed to say red when you run out of power. You can also set this line to display on any edge of the screen that you want. And you can also add multiple lines, and this isn't just limited to battery. If you want to have a line which shows you how much free RAM you've got, you can set that up, or you can set it up to show you how much time you've spent using your phone. And if you want to, you can have multiple bars set up at the same time. Next, we have Snap Swipe Draw, and this is probably my favorite app of the year. I use it on all of my devices all of the time. And this lets you access widgets anywhere on your phone, regardless of which application you're currently running. You can set a trigger area on your status bar, and I have it set so that if I swipe down from the top right hand corner, it will open up a panel of these widgets. These widgets are then fully customizable. You can change where they are, you can change the size, and if you're using something like Zupa or Custom Widget, they will also work as well. There are loads of different reasons why you might want to use a VPN client on your phone. You might be torrenting stuff and you don't want to be caught. You might just want to fool your phone into thinking you're somewhere else so that you can download an app from the Play Store which isn't available in your region. And the best way to do all of these things is Opera VPN. As well as being able to fool apps into thinking that you're somewhere that you're not, you can also use this app to check the security of your Wi-Fi network. This is great if you're at home, but it's also a good way of checking open Wi-Fi networks when you're out and about and seeing if they're secure. And then finally, Opera VPN has a built-in guardian. This will stop apps from harvesting your data and will make web browsing more secure. One of the main reasons I used to root was to customize my navigation bar. This is a part of the phone which is normally inaccessible and you normally can't customize it, but now you can with an app called Navbar Apps. This will let you change your navbar to any color, and you can make it so that your navbar will change color depending on which app you're running. The really cool thing with this is there are also navigation bar widgets that you can apply. So for example, if you want, you can put an image into your navigation bar, which lets you really customize how it looks. If you get the paid version of the app, you can download even more skins. So for example, if you want to make your phone look like a Pixel phone, you can download a Pixel phone skin and apply it. And the final widget you can have will show you how much battery life you've got left. This is kind of like the Power Bar app, but this will work across your navigation bar. Probably the number one reason to root your Android phone, apart from flashing custom ROMs, was to be able to record your screen. You can now record your screen if you're unrooted really easily for free using an app called AZ Screen Recorder. This does exactly what it says on the tin. It will give you a little floating button, and if you click that, you'll be able to record your screen. You can choose the quality you want all the way up to 1080p. 
and similarly you can record from 24 frames per second all the way up to 60 fps. This is the app that I use for all of my videos when I have another screen showing. The thing that sets this apart from other screen recording apps is it's just so easy to use and it just works every single time. You can tweak it as much as you want, so you can record from the microphone if you want to, or you can show touches, which is really useful if you're recording a tutorial. But all in all, AZ Screen Recorder is by far the best screen recording app. You don't need to be rooted, and it's free. Macro Droid is fast becoming one of my favorite apps because you can use it to control basically anything on your phone. This is an automation app, but it's much easier to use than alternatives like Tasker or If This Then That. You can do all the simple stuff like changing your Wi-Fi or Bluetooth state depending on your location but you can also use this to create some really intricate custom macros. And another thing that sets this apart is you can download macros from the community. One of my favorite macros will trigger your torch when you shake your phone, but it's got a couple of constraints built into it as well. So it won't work if you're in the light. And if you go from dark to light, it will automatically turn the torch off for you. And another favorite of mine will change your rotation state if you open certain apps. So if I open any of my video apps like YouTube, even if I have auto rotate turned off, it will automatically turn it on for when I'm in that app. If you've used automation apps before and been put off by the fact they're often quite confusing, then MacroDroid really is worth trying. The interface is really easy to use and it comes with a tutorial which will have you making macros almost instantly. I think the biggest issue with smartphones still is definitely the battery life. Screen technology and memory and RAM and all that good stuff seems to have increased tenfold over the last few years but batteries still seem to be lagging behind. However, if you have an AMOLED phone, there's a really powerful app called Pixoff. What this does is turns off a set of pixels in a grid pattern over your screen. Obviously, this is going to decrease the quality of your screen because you're literally just turning off pixels. But even if you do have this set to say 50%, it really isn't that noticeable and it will save a considerable amount of battery life because your phone is literally powering half as many pixels. Throughout the day, your phone's display will burn the most battery life, so being able to turn off half of it will give you a dramatic and significant increase in how long your phone will last. The app also comes bundled with a night filter and this will cut out different types of light depending on the time of day. And there is also an option which will change your wallpaper to a flat black background when your phone gets to a certain level of battery. The default state for an AMOLED pixel is black, so this means your phone is not going to be using those pixels and again you're going to save more battery life. So there you are guys, those are 10 of the most powerful Android apps you can use to hack your phone and make it even better. Let me know what you think of this in the comments below and let me know which you think the most powerful Android apps are. I'm probably going to do a part two to this in the near future because there's a lot of apps that I didn't include on this list. So subscribe if you do want to see that. Thank you very, very much for watching. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.